If you're that designer that keeps saying, I want to learn WordPress, but I don't know where to start and it's so intimidating, then this is the video for you. Hey everyone, my name is Megan. I have been a brand and web designer for the last almost nine years. I've learned so much about how to work with clients, how to build beautiful and functioning websites. And in this video, I want to share with you guys how to use WordPress. It is the platform that gets such a impression that it is really difficult to learn. And I personally learned how to create websites on WordPress. So it was the very first platform I really had to understand. And I feel so confident in being able to share with you guys how to use WordPress in such a simple way. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you how to understand WordPress, when you should use WordPress, but also how to really start a WordPress website. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So let's start off by explaining what exactly is WordPress. WordPress is an open source platform for creating websites. It is a content management system that allows anyone to create and manage websites without needing to code excessively. WordPress actually started as a blogging platform, but it's evolved into a versatile tool used for a wide range of websites, from blogs to portfolios to e-commerce stores. So WordPress has been around a long time and I think it's such a great platform for blogging because that's how it started and it has a really great blogging platform. It allows for unlimited amount of blogs and it allows you to really customize the way blog looks, but the blog posts look. And that's really where I think WordPress shines. Although it, you can create WordPress websites for any type of business. I, in fact, I actually use WordPress for my portfolio. So I do really like it, but it really started as that blogging platform. But mainly the biggest difference of WordPress is that it's an open source content management platform. So when you say open source, you can actually create a free website on it if you're using wordpress.com. But if you're gonna be using wordpress.org, you have so much flexibility with choosing where you want your website database hosted. So to break that down in simple terms, WordPress.org will let you create a website underneath different hosting platforms. So if I were you, I would pitch your hosting platforms just like filing cabinets. If you had a bunch of filing cabinets in front of you, one would be called SiteGround, one could be called Hostinger, one could be called HostGator. All those different filing cabinets are the different hosting platforms and each one offers something a little different. And it really does matter which one you're choosing because if you look at the filing cabinet that is overflowing with tons of papers and files, you're probably not gonna wanna choose that one because number one, your website might not get as much attention, it might be slower, and also the actual support inside of the hosting account might not be as great. Whereas if you choose a filing cabinet that's nice and clean, maybe it's way bigger, it has lots of space, that's probably a really great one to choose. And that is why I wanna take a minute to talk about Cloudway. Cloudways is a managed cloud hosting platform that simplifies the use of powerful cloud servers from providers like Google Cloud, AWS, and DigitalOcean. Cloudways is such a great option if you are going to be having a large website with a ton of traffic to it because you can really customize the size of your database inside of Cloudways. Just as it sounds, it's cloud-based, so you really have so much customization and flexibility with it. I think it's a really great option for those websites that are gonna need a lot of managed cloud space. So Cloudways is a really great option. They're also great because of the simplified interface. It's super easy to use Cloudways. Just as you can see right here on the screen, you can choose your hosting platform, you can choose the size of your business, but you can also scale your website up or down depending on maybe where you're starting and where you're gonna grow to. So it's a really great platform for those websites that are gonna experience a lot of growth over time or that plan to. Cloudways also has 24 seven support, which is always something I look for in a hosting platform because there's things that can happen if your website crashes or if something happens in the back end, you can actually reach out to support to help you through it and to get more of those technical questions answered. And I've worked on hosting platforms that don't have support or that have very limited support or not the greatest, and it can be really stressful. So when you're looking for a hosting platform, that is the number one thing that I would look for. 
Cloudways also offers security and performance, which means that they offer that free SSL certificate, which is also a very important thing to have on any website. If you ever go to a website that isn't SSL secured, it is going to either pop up that alert that Google says when it's like not a safe website, or if you're gonna be creating an e-commerce site on there, it's definitely not gonna be great if you don't have that SSL certificate. Cloudways is just so great if you wanna add on any add-ons and really enhance your website. But like I said, it's such a great choice for those businesses that plan to grow to large amounts of traffic or that just want that option to really grow with their website and create a larger database. So I really hope that visual of the filing cabinets kind of helps you out because I know that the hosting part can probably be where a lot of people get confused with WordPress, but it's actually one of the most beautiful things about WordPress is you can really choose where you want the whole database of your site to be managed. And I love that part of WordPress because you can really be flexible with that. Whereas website platforms like Squarespace or even Shopify, everything's managed under one roof. You don't really have a choice on where you want the back end of your Shopify hosted. It's always gonna be within Shopify. Whereas with WordPress, you do have that flexibility and it also allows you to work with your budget. So if you wanna look for a hosting platform that is maybe more affordable, you can definitely find that. But I really would pay attention to those main things I mentioned, like the support of your hosting platform, the size of the database. I would go look at reviews. I would also maybe talk to other WordPress web designers and see what hosting platform they really enjoyed. I personally love Cloudways. I think it's such a great option, like I mentioned, for those websites that will grow. But I also really enjoy SiteGround and I think those are both amazing options. There's tons of hosting platforms out there though, and it would take me a whole video to talk about them. So let me know if you guys wanna see that, but I really hope that helps. And if you have questions on your hosting platform, let me know down in the comments, but I think those are some really great options. So once you choose your hosting platform and you install WordPress within that hosting platform, it is time to really understand the way WordPress works. So when I say you're gonna install WordPress on the hosting platform, you just wanna make sure that whatever hosting platform or filing cabinet that you choose has the option to use WordPress as an app. So WordPress is gonna be installed within that hosting platform and that is where you're gonna be able to access the front end of your website, the back end of your website. That's where you're really gonna be able to design it, post the blogs and really create that beautiful looking website. So in very simple terms, WordPress is the app and the platform that will really run your website. So it's basically just an application. And the hosting platform is where the entire database, all the files, everything is managed. So you can't have a WordPress website without your hosting platform. Just keep that in mind. That is really the most, I think, confusing part about WordPress, but once you understand that, everything else becomes much easier. On screen here, I'm just gonna leave this analogy so you can understand what the difference is between all these. So we have our domain name. For me, that is meganweeksdesignco.com. That is the address. You can almost think about it like a house. I know I use houses as an analogy all the time. That is the address. That is how you're going to get directions to your website. Now the hosting platform is the land that your house is built on. So this is where everything is kind of put together, this is where it's built, that is your files, your database, and that is absolutely necessary. You can't have a beautiful house without your hosting platform or your address. So those are two main things you need. And then WordPress is that interior, it's the walls, it is how we're going to put it all together and really make it come to life and be a beautiful home. So those are the three things you really need to get your website fully built out. Okay, so now we have our WordPress installed, we have our hosting platform, so what's the next step? This is typically when I would recommend either installing a page builder or if you wanna use WordPress and their free themes, that's also an option. But I personally love using page builders. I know that you guys have heard me talk about Divi before. This is a really great option for those of you who want that drag and drop really simple page building tool so you don't have to know any code at all. It's a great tool for that. I'm sure you guys have also heard about Elementor. That is another really great tool, very similar to Divi. But there's also another one called Bricks and it's been really great. I've used it for one of my clients and it really gives you a clean website. 
but I will say Bricks is a little bit more technical. You have to know how to create classes and divs and it does require a little bit of knowledge of coding. So if that's something you wanna stay away from or you to learn over time, that's a great option, but it definitely takes some more learning. But if you want that page building feel, Divi, Elementor are some really great options. So typically with Divi, I pay for, I actually have a lifetime purchase of Divi, so I can use it on unlimited websites, which is so amazing. That's part of the reason I decided to go with Divi is because I can use it on all my client websites. They do not have to pay for Divi, so I don't have to worry about me going to them and saying, hey, the website cost is this much. I'm just adding on this much to pay for Divi. I don't have to worry about that. I do take into account with my total project costs all of the tools I need to make something come to life, and that's part of the process. But Divi is super fair pricing, so I purchased it one time and I use it so many times, and it's really great. It's how I built my own personal website, which is what I'm gonna be using as an example in this video to just share with you guys how I built this. So once you decide on what page builder you wanna choose, you will either install that in the appearance and themes area, or sometimes as a plugin, and you'll be able to access everything within that page builder on your WordPress dashboard. So you don't have to go log into something else, it's all within your WordPress dashboard. Just makes it a little bit easier to build everything out. It's almost like if we're using that house analogy, it's like a contractor, like, okay, I'm gonna have this person come in and help me build it so I don't have to know how to do everything from the ground up, like coding. It just allows you to create a super easy to build website. There is a few things to keep in mind though, if you are gonna use a page builder, to really make sure that you are being efficient with your image sizing because those page builders are adding on some storage of your website. So it could potentially slow the website down. So it's something to keep in mind that if you do use a page builder, everything else on your website should be super fast and efficient and optimized. So just keep in mind that if you use a page builder, that has to be top of mind as well. But if we install that page builder, then the next step that I would take is adding on some pages. So let's say we're building out a home page. So I would go under the pages tab, add my home page, and from there you'll be able to see whatever page builder you're using. So for me, if I'm using Divi, I'll be able to say enable Divi builder, I click on that and it'll take me to the front end so I don't even have to know what I'm doing on the back end. I can see everything visually on my front end page and you can do that drag and drop effect. So if WordPress is completely new to you, then it'll probably take you a little while to get used to these page builders and how to use them, how to get the right spacing and all of that. I teach a lot about all this in my Patreon, so if you guys want more in-depth tutorials on that, then check it out. But it's really important to know the basics of a website and the spacing and grids and all that to make it look really clean and professional but you can even practice by using some of the Divi themes or Elementor themes, whichever page builder that you're deciding to use, there's definitely some templates that you can play around with and just get a feel for it before you go fully custom. But that is how you would create your pages and enable that visual builder. You can save it as a draft, you can publish it, and this is how you can really start to build out your website without having to know how to code. There's other settings inside of WordPress that are also super important to know, like in your settings, knowing your permalink setup, also making sure that you check it off so it will get scanned by Google and search engines. Sometimes that's turned off, so that's another really important thing to know. But there's also some other things you could do to enhance your website on WordPress, like adding plugins such as Yoast SEO or even the image optimizer plugins. I think those are great if you are a little lost on how to make sure your website's like super fast and optimized. I would look into an image optimizer. I like Smush because it will shrink my images for me. And I also really enjoy a cache plugin because when you are designing pages on WordPress, it is actually storing each revision you do. So that's another really important key thing to keep in mind with WordPress is every edit you do is stored until that cache is cleaned out. So 
I typically like to clear out my cache every time I'm about to make some updates to my website. I want to make sure that on the front end people can see those updates and it's not loading up an old revision. It is the brand new refreshed update and that everything looks up to date. So that is another thing that I would consider adding on. Those are things you can do later. I would really just get used to setting up WordPress, setting up a page builder and like setting up pages. I would get used to that before you add any plugins in because this is one key thing I wanted to mention is that WordPress is a beautiful, flexible platform because of the options for plugins. If you've ever used Shopify or if you've ever used Showit, these website platforms, they have apps within it typically, but either it costs money to use that application without like a watermark on it, or if you're using Shopify, some of those apps do cost an additional fee. Not with WordPress. Most of the plugins on WordPress are actually free and that's a beautiful thing, but it also requires you to be a little bit careful because if you are going to be installing a plugin that is not supported with that version of WordPress or maybe it hasn't been tested or maybe it is just not going to load properly, it could really slow your website down. It could even potentially make your WordPress website crash. So a few key points that I keep in mind is making sure I'm choosing a plugin that has lots of reviews and lots of really good reviews. If it has really bad reviews, I typically stay away from it, but I always look for the reviews. I also will just look for some popular options, whether I'm like reading blog posts on the options that people use for the image optimization and the caching. But the plugins are so important to know because a lot of the times if you run into an issue on your WordPress website, it's most likely because of a plugin. So it can either be really beautiful to build a custom website using plugins, but it can also be really damaging because if you don't update your plugins or if the plugin is outdated and not working with that version, you could really mess your website up. So I'd be really careful with plugins and I would try to only use a few of them. I've gone on to client websites where they have like tens and 20 of plugins and I'm like, we need to clean this up because it is slowing your website down, but it also is risking that your website is going to look broken on the front end. So just really tread lightly with plugins. Try not to really rely on them, but it can be a really great option and it's part of the reason that I think WordPress is still up there as a website option. Those are just some of the basics of WordPress. I mean, there's so much I could talk about with websites and how to make it perform well, how to make it function well, load well. There's so many things. I just posted a video recently about three website design mistakes I see a lot of beginner web designers make. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll link it up above here, but that can really go over some of the key points that I would keep in mind when designing websites. But those are just a few tips on how to create a WordPress website. I hope it kind of helped to break down that analogy of your domain, your address, the hosting, the framework of your website, and then also the page builder, which is just helping you make it look beautiful. I really hope this was helpful. I hope it kind of broke it down in simple terms for you. If it did, let me know in the comments and let me know if you have any questions on WordPress. I love talking about WordPress. Even though I'm actually recreating my website on Framer, WordPress is always gonna be up there for me. It's always a great option and I love to chat about it. But let me know if it was helpful and if you guys wanna learn more about website design, be sure to check out this video right here. Those three web design mistakes can really help you out and get you started on your web design journey. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.